On The Real Journey Show, you can expect to hear about a real journey. The listeners will be reminded that life experiences have a compelling way of connecting us, inspiring us, and empowering us to stay real. Hey friends, so welcome back to The Real Journey Show. This is episode 37, titled, You Are Happening to the World. So I haven't been on here for a while and I have had some wild health issues. If uh, you follow my journey at all on Instagram at terrammartin.real, you have seen the woes of a hysterectomy gone very wrong. (laughs) So the hysterectomy was done back in March. It went really well. The recovery I thought was going really well until 12 weeks later at ISTE, it reopened completely. Um, I had an emergency surgery there in Philly and missed the entire conference pretty much. I only got to go for like a half a day and then came home, didn't realize, but I got an infection from all the things that happened in Philly, which is very detailed. You will want to go find that on my Instagram story. It's a little much. And um, was in the hospital, in and out of the hospital for the past seven weeks. So for the past week, I have been off of bed rest and now released to travel and speak. And while I was on that six weeks of bed rest, guys, If you know me at all, you know that is like pure torture to be on six weeks of bed rest. I am the girl who ran a 5K three days a week at 5 a.m., worked, coached CrossFit in the mornings from 4 a.m. to 7, then came to work, worked all day, worked out in the afternoon from 4.15 to 5.15, CrossFit workout, and then came home, walked my dog. I mean, I am just a busy little beaver. And so having to just lay flat and rest to get this infection gone that was in my abdominal cavity um, was (laughs) torture. I will say, um, because I felt so bad, it wasn't as hard to lay still as I thought it was. I was sleeping somewhere between 15 and 18 hours a day. I could not take my ADHD meds, which is crazy as well. And it was just a time where I couldn't really do a lot. I would work when I was awake the best I could remotely. And I found myself watching Netflix and different little series on TV. It was something I could do in the recliner, leaned back, And to occupy my mind, I read a lot. I also wrote a lot. But while I was watching these shows, I came across this show called The Summer I Turned Pretty. And it's kind of like a young adults type series. Uh, If you like that cheesy little love story kind of series, that's the thing it is. And it was perfect just to take my mind off of all the things that were happening in my life. And while I was watching it one night, one of the characters, Susanna, she's the mom of the boys, said this quote. And actually she wrote it in a card to another kid in the show. And it simply said, the world is happening to you, but you are also happening to the world. I love this quote. I sat there and just sat with it for a moment. I even paused the show because I just wanted to let that resonate a little bit into my mind and into my heart because at that moment, there were so many things happening to me. And that infection, unfortunately, was something the doctors couldn't figure out. Um, when my hysterectomy reopened, it was in the middle of a hotel bathroom. So without going into way too many details, I basically birthed some of my insides and pushed them back inside of me. I had no idea that that's what was happening. I just 
knew that wasn't supposed to come out. It didn't look like something that should be outside of my body and pushed it back in. And when I did that, I had touched an elevator in the hotel. I had touched a light in the hotel. Of course, you don't wash your hands before you go to the bathroom. You wash them after you go to the bathroom. So it was just a setup for a really nasty infection. And we didn't know what it was. Neither did the doctors. They tried um, to get to the capsule of infection inside my abdominal cavity, and they literally couldn't get there to get a culture of it. And so we just had to treat it blindly. And that's why it took six weeks of antibiotics to fight it and a lot of rest and a lot of appointments and a lot of checking my blood and um, checking my blood counts and all of those things. The world was happening to me and I didn't understand why. I felt like I was a healthy girl. I pay attention to what I put in my body. I try really hard to do what's best for my body. And all of these things in my mind, my body was failing me. And I honestly got to this place where I felt like the world was failing me. I was just so upset. Every piece of news the doctors kept coming back and seeing was just another thing they were taking away from me. No fitness. And they were like, no fitness for, we don't know how long. It could be it could be three months. It could be six months. It could be a year. We don't know. We we have to fight the infection. We can't let it get into your bloodstream. We can't let it infect other organs. If it does, you could lose limbs. You could lose your life. You know, right now, we're not even worried about the vaginal cuff that they had repaired at that surgery. We're worried about this infection. And they just were drilling that in my head. No CrossFit coaching. No traveling and speaking. Um, you can't be on your feet more than 30 minutes at a time. You can only walk around in your house, no walking your dog. I mean, every single thing that brought me joy that I felt like they were just taking it away. And I was getting more and more frustrated every single, with every piece of news, because, you know, life is just this fascinating interplay between these experiences and our reactions to those experience experiences. I feel like it's just this intricate dance between the external event, whether we want it or not. This was an unwanted external event, but even if it's a good one, right? And our internal responses that shapes how we live in this world, right? Sometimes these, like I said, these events are wanted, but this one was not. And so when I think about this quote, the world is happening to you, but you are also happening to the world. I can't help but think of the first part of the quote. Let's just start there. The world is happening to you. I feel like this quote reminds me a lot of just this beautiful world that we live in, right? This myriad of stimuli in the external environment from the rising of the sun that paints these beautiful hues of orange and pink to these challenges that smack us right in the face. Um, without warning, life is just this continuous stream of events that influence our thoughts and emotions and actions. And it's easy to feel like just an observer in this grand theater of life, right? It's easy to just blame the world for happening to us. And this is kind of where I got. I got to this place and it was early on in the fight of the infection when I was just like, well, I just have to sit here and take it. I mean, the world is happening to me, but I want to explore the second half of that quote just a little bit and think about how we react to the world happening to us. It's natural to react to the world around us, right? Um, however, the real power lies in us responding meaningfully rather than impulsively. <laughs> and I am preaching to the choir because this is me. I need to think about this and, and respond in a way that's meaningful and not just impulsive. And I feel like that's where the second part of this quote comes into play. But you are also happening to the world. We aren't meant to be these bystanders of the world unfolding in front of us, right? We are meant 
to actively co-create our reality and purposefully choose our response to these external events, whether they're welcomed or not. You get to decide how the world happens to you, right? I was keeping everything with me. Um, I don't have, I have my husband and my son, but I don't have any immediate family. So there's no one to check on me. There was no one really calling except for two of my great friends, my husband and my son. And he didn't let any of his family know. And honestly, I just felt isolated and all alone. And I was like, I got in my head, really. I was smiling on the outside, but on the inside, I was like, man, no one even knows I'm here. Like I could literally not fight this infection and be gone. And and no one would even notice, you know, you get to these places where it's it's like your mind is playing tricks on you. But I had to remind myself that I don't have to sit and watch the world happen to me. Like I get to decide if I want to happen to the world. And I decided, you know what? I want to share my journey a little bit more. I'd shared up until this point, but there was no good news. So I felt like I wasn't going to be encouraging anyone by sharing. So why should I even put it out there? But when we start to share some of the raw, real moments of our life, I honestly think that's where the power lies. That's where people get to see how you you are empowered by taking that ownership of your role in happening to the world. I think our perspective plays like this pivotal role in determining the impact of these external events, right? Um, I know that, you know, like two people can go through the same thing and some may see it as a setback and a devastating failure. And I was honestly at this point. And then others can see it as an opportunity of growth, something that I can learn from, something that's given me new levels of empathy that I can relate to others because of it. But it's all about being real and allowing our perceptions to filter the world through the lens of our experience and our values, right? I feel like with my latest health challenges, there was definitely this fork in the road. I think I spent about eight days in this dark, yucky, place of frustration and pity. And I just didn't want to fight. And it was silly because now looking back, I'm like, it was, girl, (laughs) you had that all along. You were going to be fine. But in my mind, I felt really defeated. And I, I wasn't sharing my journey at that time. And I was kind trying to go through it by myself with a couple of people around that were doing their best to encourage me. But in my head, it was a defeat. Um, It was a very dark place. Like I don't even like talking about it. But there came a place in that fork in the road where I could choose that dark, ugly place of frustration. Or I could choose to accept my reality and fight the fight. I am a fighter. I came out of a very abusive, ugly, yucky home life. And I overcame that. (laughs) That was 18 years. I can overcome this. And I started thinking more productively. I started saying, you know what? I need to accept that this is where I'm at and stop looking too far in the future. One of the doctors that came in, he was the infectious uh, disease doctor. He said that I need you to stop asking and worrying about fitness and exercising. And I need you to start worrying about living because that's where we're at. And it hit me. And I was like, I need to start thinking about living if I'm going to try to fight this and I'm going to overcome this. And there were multiple times that doctors were telling me, you are so strong and you are so healthy. And that is playing in your favor. The muscle mass that is going away is being used as source energy to fight this infection. And we may not know what exactly this infection is, but we're fighting it the best we can with medications, IV medications, but your body is doing a big part of this too. So don't be mad at your body for failing you. Be grateful 
that you have such a healthy body to fight for you. And I started being very intentional about how I thought about the next steps, no matter what challenge you're facing. Maybe you're not facing a health journey like this yet. (laughs) I definitely didn't foresee this in my future several months ago, but it doesn't matter what you face. The world is going to happen to you. And if we embrace this intentional living, we set some clear intentions on how we want to show up in the world and actively align our thoughts, our behaviors, our actions, we can truly happen to the world in a very powerful, productive, meaningful way. And so a few things that really helped me happen to the world during this time was connecting with others. Um, I did have my therapist, thank goodness, I had a couple of close friends, I told you that already, my husband and my son, and they really helped me to try and fight through those moments of deep darkness, because it is when your mind starts connecting like that, and all you're getting is seemingly bad news, it's really hard to start to think in a more productive, moving forward way. And let me tell you, there were a lot of people that kept telling me, hey, but just think about the positive. What are the positives? I'm like, honestly, those comments made me so angry because I could not see the positive and they weren't in my shoes. They weren't sitting in that hospital bed, getting poked, having uh, veins blow out because they had so many IVs having to run through my body, um, they weren't dealing with those things. And so in my mind, uh, thinking positive and in that situation was so frustrating and and being told to was also really frustrating. And one day I was telling my therapist how mad I was getting by people saying that. And she said, Tara, what, what we need to do is think productive. We need to think meaningfully, productively, like what is a good next step? And we can celebrate wins. So there is moments of celebration, but we just need to set the goal in the right place. We need to be intentional about what is the next goal. The next goal is not to get back into the gym. You cannot do that. The next goal is not to be traveling around the country, sharing your passion with educators. The next goal is this. And there were always just these small little tiny goals that we would just keep trying to reach. And when I started thinking like that, my mindset changed. I became grateful. I was able to cultivate this gratitude, which was another thing that really helped me and be thankful for this shift in my health, but also a shift in my perspective that helped me to gain a bigger, a greater appreciation for my current reality. I didn't understand why I was going through it, but I was starting to gain some meaning. And I'm like, oh, this is what it is to fight and come out of this. Oh, this is what it is to overcome a situation like this. And as I went through each of these pieces, the levels of empathy that I have gained and will continue to gain as I continue to go through all these pieces, um, they just became strengthened. And the more that I shared my story on Instagram or with others when I'm visiting, the more I realized that I wasn't alone. There's a lot of people out there fighting battles that we know nothing about. And they are also feeling all of these emotions. And they are also trying to set these small goals and celebrate these little wins. But the more that I shared my story, the more other people opened up and shared their story. In fact, I was just at my first speaking engagement. I finally got to travel this past week. We tried it out on Wednesday. And the superintendent was talking to me about being diagnosed with colon cancer at the age of 43. So he was a year younger than me, very fit, very healthy, similar situation. And he fought for a year. He's eight years removed from it. But he encouraged me in so many ways. He knew my story because I was maybe not going to be able to speak for them. So they were looking at other options. But he also understood and he had these this level of empathy that just resonated with me. And he's like, I want you to know that when you come out on the other side, 
the comeback is so real. You're going to feel relentless, unstoppable. You are going to get out there and everything that you lost, you're going to gain it back. And not only that, you're going to be able to relate to people in a way that you've never been able to relate to them because of this journey that you've gone through. And it meant so much to me to hear someone else talk about their story and how, how they happened to the world, if you will, because he started to share how he has helped others that are going through cancer or helped others that are going through different health situations. He used that situation, that ugly set, setback, if you will, as a overcoming comeback story and is encouraging people all around to keep fighting, keep pushing, don't give up. And that is how he chose to happen to the world. And I think that's exactly what is happening to me. I'm starting to realize that the world, it's going to happen to us. It doesn't matter. It's inevitable. Every single one of us, it's going to have sickness, health conditions, any of that. It's no respecter of persons. Um, anything. Like there's so many life events that it doesn't matter how healthy, how wealthy, how strong you are. The world is going to happen to you. It's inevitable. But you can step into that role of both observer and creator, and you can happen to the world. In fact, you are happening to the world. Thanks for joining me on The Real Journey Show. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please use the hashtag, hashtag Real Journey Show and tag me on all the socials. I'm at Tara Martin EDU on Twitter, at Tara M. Martin. Real on Instagram, and Tara M. Martin on Facebook.